Hey everybody, Jerry Mitchellek here, and welcome to our first ever live exclusive Patreon event. So I want to appreciate the fact that you guys have subscribed, and uh, what we're going to try to do with these events is to help fund the uh, YouTube channel and the Patreon, and uh, I've got some questions here, so really appreciate you guys being here, and we've got a couple of questions from different people, and I'll uh, address them, so here we go, Mr. David Johnson asked what revolver did you use in steel challenge and why well when i first started steel challenge oh, 30 years ago it was a model 27 it was an 8 and 3 8 inch uh 38 357 magnum six shot so on a five target scenario you couldn't really mess up too bad so I had one extra bullet you know i had that barney bullet but i only had one then we went to the model 627 which was a which was an eight shooter 38 357 and then i had built a 327 and I converted it to 38 Super. It was a scandium frame and that was pretty trick. And now of course they got the 929 9mm revolver, which is probably the most excellent combination for that. And the reason for that was 38 Special was originally designed for black powder. And when you put light bullets and light charges of powder in them, you get very erratic first shots. And the smaller the case, like a 38 Super or a 9mm, the more consistent the ammunition and when you're shooting in a match like Steel Challenge. It just makes for a better performance. So, so there you have it, David. That's the answer to that one. And now we've got a Mr. Chris Gunn. He's asking me, what are your thoughts, experiences around using 22 caliber guns and conversion kits to supplement a shooter's training and range time? Uh, it's a wonderful thing. I shoot a lot of, I started with 22 caliber guns. So, and I still use them today. I, I shoot the M&P 22, uh, uh, AR and, and, a, and a lot of my steel challenge stuff and their pistol the uh, so 22s are really great most of the conversion kits are kind of iffy if, if, but if you have to convert you have to so I, I usually use dedicated guns in 22 caliber for training but uh, it, either way it's a good it's a good it's a good way to supplement your training it's a lot cheaper and that's the whole thing about it you have to shoot a lot of ammunition to get better so 22 is just the way to go all right we got Matthew Barr and he's asking, this is a pretty big question, how do you plan out your training for the day and what drills would you suggest <clears throat> to a new to intermediate shooters looking to improve core skills? Well, you have to first uh, isolate what your core skills want to be uh, to that particular event, like steel challenge coming out of the holster is extremely important. Uh, you're judged on every time you present the gun to the target, so your first shot is paramount. You have to have a really clean and consistent first shot. So you have to work on that, work on your holster skills. And then steel challenge also, <clears throat> target acquisition is everything, so your visual skills would be a big part of how to train correctly for that. So my personal observation on where I'm at now as a competitor, like I'm going to a, I'm going to a three-gun match this weekend, I'm going to the Nordic Components match, I'm gonna go out here Monday through Wednesday, and I'm just gonna work on my basic skills, how to load a shotgun quick while I'm moving, how to shoot a rifle offhand, uh, some pistol work, shoot some plate racks, uh, just basic stuff, but I just wanna stay sharp, make sure everything is sighted in and clean, and I'm gonna to head to the range. So everybody's a little bit different on what they're, what they're strong and what they're weak at, so, and the whole secret to getting better is to always shoot what you don't enjoy. So. You're working really good out of the host to work on something that you're not good at target acquisition or distance or a single uh, bullseye style shooting just uh, you have to have a broad spe spectrum of uh, application so if you, whatever you're weak at that's what you should uh, train at so all right we got a mr. James marks here he's asking what what's your favorite part about shooting in itself and in competition uh, shooting to me was just when I was a kid. I mean, that's what I wanted to do: have a BB gun or a pellet gun, <laughs> making noise. So people started paying me to do this. I'm well, I, I can do this. So the competition part. What I found about competition, it helps you grow as a, as a person. Uh, it uh, you have to watch your ego, uh, the expectations of a performance. So you have to apply yourself in a consistent and a meaningful manner. And it helps you grow as a person. The more you compete, the better you are as a person. I mean, it just, uh, I've seen a lot, of, a lot of guys get into the sport with big heads and they're not here anymore. Uh, they couldn't live with it. So <laughs> you have to accept who you are at the time and always grow. So that's the fun part about competition. 
And we got Cody Longston here. He's asking me, when did you start shooting? And at what point did you decide to, to take it up full time? Well, I shot my first competition in 1976. It was just a few guys shooting at some steel on a stick. You know, it was called the Miller Combat League at the time. And I went pro in 1990. Uh, I was working a full-time job for about 15 years and Smith & Wesson came along and was going to give me a full-time position and give me X amount of dollars and, and ammunition so I wasn't married at the time and I said, well, that's me, you know, give me some bullets, give me some guns, let's, let's play. So, since 1990 I've been shooting full-time, so uh, kind, of a, kind of a good deal. And Mike Paul asking, uh, when did you know you had a gift with marksmanship? That's really a that's really a tough question because I did it because it was fun. Uh, I had a full time job, so my shooting was my hobby, and it was a way to get away from work and just have a good time. So you really never start great, but uh, the ability to learn and adapt is part of the uh, I guess you could say the gift on how to how to succeed at anything. So just to want to do better and apply the time to make it happen. So. And it's fun, you know, you meet a lot of good people on the range. I do have to say shooters in general are very good people. Uh, they'll help you in any which way they can. And it's just, it's just fun competing. So I've been really lucky. And we've got another question. We've got Michael Walker. What is your all-time favorite round to shoot or reload? I would have to say after having shot just about every caliber forever and ever, I'd say 9 millimeter. It's probably the, the easiest one to load, the most economical and the most consistent because of the case size is so small. The components are cheap. You can get 9 mil brass anywhere. And now there's just about every division in competition you can shoot a 9. So uh, there's really not, not an excuse to shoot it. Uh, it's just about as cheap as long rifle uh, rimfire if you buy the components at the right price. So shot a lot of 9 millimeter, and I'm shooting a lot of it. I'm going to go shoot some today. So 9 is uh, the way to go. It's also a good personal carry uh, round also. So, that kind of wraps up what we have today. So, uh, I appreciate all you guys tuning in and uh, subscribing and making this Patreon event work. Uh, it means a lot to us so here when we film. They hope pay for all the expenses and the, the camera crew and all these good looking guys looking at me here. So, anyway, <laughs> I appreciate everything and uh, we're looking forward to doing this event again. Thank you very much.